This video is going to talk about surface area. Finding the surface area of an object would be like finding how much wrapping paper you need in order to wrap the outside of it. Surface area is not a very complicated uh, measurement to find. It is, however, very complex, which means there are lots of steps, which means you need to take your time when finding surface area. So let's go ahead and let's talk about first what we need to do to find surface area. You need to find the area of all of the sides on this figure. In this case, you need to find six areas. You need to find the front, the back, the side, the other side, the top, and the bottom. And I just flip top and bottom. The important thing to remember is to get the hidden sides, the back, the back side, and the bottom that you normally can't see. On this particular shape it's very easy to do because the front and the back are exactly the same measurements, the top and the bottom are exactly the same measurements, and the sides are exactly the same measurement. So I'm going to find the area of this bottom right now. That's going to be my goal. To find the area, it's a rectangle, so it's going to be length times width. And I'm going to change this so it says a bottom. Length times width is 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is the same thing as 12 feet squared. That's the area of the bottom. Now I'm going to find the area of the side. Again, that's a rectangle, so the area is going to be length times width. The length of this side is 3. Pretty simple. We don't have a width that's very easy to see, though. What you have to remember is that this this and this edge are all the same. So if this is 9 feet, so is this. So it's going to be 3 times 9. 3 times 9 is 27 feet squared. Now we need to find, we found the bottom, we found the side, now we need to find the front. Bottom, top, front, yes. The area of the front, the front is still a rectangle, so it's still going to be length times width. Remember to write length as cursive, that way you don't con confuse it with the number 1. The length is 4, the width is 9. Remember that length and width are interchangeable, it means that you can switch them around. 4 times 9 is 36 feet squared. So now I have the bottom. I have the side, and I have the front. I don't have the top. I don't have the other side, and I don't have the back. The good thing about these is that I don't have to find anything. The bottom was 12 feet so the front is going to be 12 feet squared as well. The one side was 27 feet squared, so the other side is going to be 27 feet squared. The front side was 36 feet squared, so the back side is going to be 36 feet squared. Now all I have to do is add up all of these numbers. I could add up all six numbers, but that's going to take me a little bit. I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm just going to look at these three. The bottom, the side, and the front, the three that we originally found. And I'm going to add 12 plus 27 plus 36. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. Carry the 1. 2 plus 3 is 5. Plus 2 is 7. So I, right now, have a surface area of 75 feet squared, but I haven't yet added in these. 
rather than adding them in, if I know that this is the same, this is the same, and this is the same, I'm just going to double the 75 that we found. Since I don't have any room there, I'm going to go over here. So 75 times 2, because times 2, times 2, times 2. 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 7 plus 1. The surface area of this shape is 150 feet squared. If I could show you everything at once, I would. That is the rectangular prism. Now let's go ahead and look at the triangular prism. This one's going to take me half a second to draw to make sure I can get everything there that needs to be there. Okay, now we have a triangular prism. What we need to do is we need to label everything. Hold on as I copy off my cheat sheet that I have set aside here. Okay, we have our triangular prism. Now what I need to do is I need to figure out the surface area, which is the area of this side, and this side, and this side. And if you're paying close attention, you'll notice that there's also another side hidden on the bottom and on the back. We also need to find, so we need to find one, the triangle, two, the triangle, three, the side, four, the side, five, the back surfaces. So we have five surfaces we need to find. We can start off with the triangle because there's a triangle on top and a triangle on bottom and it's a prism, we know that the triangles will measure the same. So all I have to do is find the area of one triangle and double it to find the area of both triangles. The area of a triangle is one half times base times height. In this triangle, the base is 5, and the height is 4. Technically, when I solve this, I should start at the left and work my way to the right, just like I read, but because I know that you can change the order of multiplication and still get the same answer, I'm going to multiply 4 times 1 half, because half of 4 is 2. That's easier than dealing with a 2.5 it would have been if we used the 5. So now we have A equals 2 times 5. The area of that one triangle is 10 millimeters squared. Double it to find the area of the other triangular base. And right now we have 10 and 10. Because we have one triangle. well, you can't even see that. 10 and 10, one triangular base the other triangular base. Now we need to find the area of these rectangles. I'm going to look at the back rectangle first because that's the hidden one and we don't want to forget the hidden one. The area of a rectangular shape is length times width. The length of the rectangular shape in the back of here is 7. The width which is here or here is 5. 7 times 5, the area of that is 35 millimeters squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 35 up here. So we have our triangle, our triangle, our back rectangle. All nice and labeled. Now what I want to do is I want to get the side rectangle. And what I notice is that the measurements are 7 and 5. I already found a rectangle with 7 and 5, so I'm just going to double that number. I'm going to put another 35 for left side rectangle. And now we only have one more. This rectangle right here. 
to find the area of a rectangle, we remember that it's length times width. The length is 7, because all of these measure the same. It's getting a little bit hard to see our prism now. And the width is 6. So now I need to multiply 7 times 6. And when I multiply 7 times 6, I get 42. Get our label back, millimeters squared. So I'm going to put my 42 up here. This is the right side rectangle. Now I have all my measurements. I just need to add it up to find the surface area. I need to put all of these together to find surface area. 5 times 5 is 10, plus the 2 is 12. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, 11, 12, 13. My surface area is 132 millimeters squared. Gotta see everything. All right. Lastly, we're going to hop on over to our cylinder. We have our cylinder, and pretty sure this one is not going to be drawn to scale, but life goes on. We remember that all figures are always a little bit off, especially when we're drawing them on a white. And a measurement for this, the radius is 10 yards, and the height is 20 yards. Okay, we have our cylinder. To find the surface area of this, we're going to get rid of the circles first, because we, can, we know what those are, and we also know that this is a circle, and not a weird oval eye thing. Area of a circle is pi r squared. So I'm going to plug in, I'm going to use 3.14 for pi. The radius, which is the distance from the center to the edge, is 10. Put a little squared at the end of that. The first thing I solve is 10 squared. 10 to the second power is the same thing as saying, well we don't want to put that there, do we? 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Now I want to multiply 3.14 times 100. And 3.14 times 100 is 314. Remember our label, yards squared. So we're going to put, we'll put it up here again. Well, I just put that decimal in there, 314. Now remember, that was for this circle. We also need the other circle. So we're just going to double that. Two 314s. The last thing that we need to do is we need to find the area of this thing right here. Now, if you go get a can of whatever you have a can of at home, maybe Campbell's soup, maybe not Campbell's soup, but some kind of canned soup or something with a label, you will notice that when you unravel the label, you actually get a rectangle. And then here would be the circle on the top that you unraveled, and here would be the circle on the bottom. This rectangle gets rolled around the circle, and that makes the curved part of the cylinder. So we need to figure out what is this measure, because we know that up and down it's 20, but we don't know what this is. If you roll the top of the circle across, it will be the exact same measurement, because we can see how it meets up over here. So we need to find the circumference of the circle, and that will tell us the measurement, the other measurement of our rectangle. So we're going to pull out our handy dandy circumference formula. 
which is, which one are we using here? We're, we have the radius, so we're going to use 2 pi r. 2 times 3.14 times the radius all the way up here is 10. We're going to multiply 2 times 3.14. We are running out of room. Let's go do it over here. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 1, 2, 1, 2. And we have our decimal. So 2 times 3.14 is 6.28. Multiply that times 10. You have 62. 0.8 yards. Now that we have our 62.8 yards, that's the circumference, which is the same thing as this right here. So we can point to here for the circumference. We can also point down to here for the length. Now I can figure out the length of this rectangle. So now I know I can find the area, which is length times width. We just figured out the length was 62.8. The width is 20. Now all I need to do is multiply these numbers. 62.8 times 20. We don't need anything to do with that zero. If you can see this, 2 times 8 is 16, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, 2 times 6 is 12, and then we have 1 decimal, so we put 1 decimal, so we really don't need that 0 at all, because now that's an invisible 0. So my area is 1,256 yards squared. All I have to do now is I take this 1,256 and I put it up here. We're going to erase this yard, so we're going to move this down a little bit. 1,256. Once I add everything up, 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 6 is 14. 5, 6, 7, 8. 3 plus 3 is 6, 7, 8. My final area, what did we do here, is 1,884 yards squared. That is the surface area of this figure.